Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Frank Taylor and today on the channel we are going to talk about cracks in buildings, normal cracks in buildings. Now I want us to, I'm taking it to Africa because that's where I'm from and precisely Ghana, that's where I'm from. Now normally we go up to see some buildings in our community that we, we tend to see that they have cracks in their buildings cracks in the building but that is not what they aimed for or that wasn't their kind of dream house that they wanted to get they didn't have that in picture when they were building the house but later on they get to see that they have cracks in the building now what brings about these cracks that is why today i want to talk to you about now when we are building most often we have our blocks and we have our mortar for the plastering that that that's what i mean for the plastering. Now with the blocks, normally we nowadays we get it from companies and manufacturing blocks companies. So normally we don't have problems with the blocks aspect. So I'm not going to tackle more on the blocks aspect because nowadays we don't uh, produce our blocks ourselves. We buy them from companies and that they use the correct ratios to get the blocks. So we end up getting the correct product. But then if you are producing the blocks yourself, then I think this one will be very informative to you because you will need it. Why do we get cracks in our buildings? I'm tackling the plastering aspect of the building because that is very important. Now, plastering, plastering is mortar. We use mortar for plastering. That's the sand, cement, and water. Those are the composition or the components for plastering yes so where does the problem come from we use the correct ratios and everything and where does the problem come from you can't get the correct ratio easily because with the correct ratio it's not easy for you to plaster it i repeat it again you can't get the correct ratio easily because with the correct ratio it's not easy the consistency is low or the recability is not easy to get it good for a good plaster it's either the water will be low or the cement will be low or the water will be too much and like it wouldn't balance that's what I mean so how can we tackle this problem and solve it the problem is with the silt the silt in sand the silt in Germany we call it schluff the silt in sand is another problem and sometimes we have clay clay in the sand now clay also in german we call it ton ton t o n ton why do we have these problems and why do these things serve as a problem in sand now with the sloof or the silt Normally, the silt pass through the 0.063 millimeter sieve. Like if you are sieving it, it should pass through the 0.063 millimeter sieve. So it's part of sand, but when it pass through that sieve, it becomes silt. Most of them are silt. And with the ton, which is the clay, it passed through the 0.02 millimeter sieve. That means it's very, very, very fine. Very, very, very fine. But it has it's also it has its properties, which I'm going to talk about. So these are the components of the the uh, the sand for the mortar. I mean the sand, cement, and clay uh, and water. But the silt component, it has a role to play. When it's too much in sand, it's not good. When it is too much, or too much in sand. It is not good why am i saying this now we have sand we have cement and we have water when we mix the cement with the water you get cement paste which in german we call it cement line cement line now with the cement paste it helps to bond the sand together so it serves as the binding agent or it says it serves as the binding agent for the sand so it helps them to bond together and it performs its purpose but cement is very fine and for plastering i will i normally recommend 
32.5 R. 32.5 R. If you are using N, depending on the weather, you can use L, you can use R, you can use N. But normally in Africa, we use R because of our weather. We use R. So the 32.5 R is for plastering works and the 42.5 R and the 52.5 R is for the concrete works. Normally, that is the best recommendation to use. Now, so we are using the 32.5 R for our mortar works, for the plastering, I mean. And with this, the, the cement is very, very, very fine. So what happens with the, uh, with the cement and the silt? Now, the problem comes in when the silt is very fine and the, plaster, uh, and the cement is also fine. So the, the problem is, it's, it, in science, we call it substitutional defect. In substitutional defect, that means wherever the cement should be, the silt substitutes it. So instead of sand, cement, sand, so that it will serve as the binding, the binding agent, it becomes sand, silt, sand. Which silt is not a binding agent. So what happens? It wouldn't bind well. And later on, you will start seeing cracks in your buildings. You will start seeing cracks in your buildings. And we have the torn, which is the clay. We clay, it has a lot of properties and it always changes with the weather. Like its property, we, when you have tone or we, when you have clay in your composition or your component for the plaster, it's good. A little amount is good, but when it's too much, it's not good. Here is the case clay absorbs water. Clay absorbs water. So at the end of the day, you tend to use more water instead of using a small amount of water. For the plaster works, you tend to use more water, which changes the water cement ratio, and thus you are not going to get it well. And when it absorbs, it swells. So that is the problem. So instead of it performing the aspect of a interstitial defect, as interstitial defect means, interstitial defect means like when you have the sand, and you have sand, there will by all means be a small space there. In that small space, the cement comes there to occupy that position because it is not a square. It's always spherical, cubical, or something like it has a shape, cubic shape, or something shape. So it wouldn't, there will always be a space within the sand and the sand. You get it. So this cement comes to fill in that position, or the cement paste, or the cement line in German, as they call it. So it will come and fill that space over there now when the clay comes to fill in that interstitial position that's that the uh, interstitial position within the sand and sand it comes to fill that space now it gets water it absorbs water and it tends to swell so instead of it performing its purpose as a interstitial defect it's now it it now tends to form a different shape which is not part of them at the end of the day that leads to the short ski defect and other defect that means they, they, they it's either it leaves a vacant position or it comes to for a form a big a component which is not needed there so there's a lot of residual stresses within the components which is not good so out of this cracks start forming because at the end of the day you use more water you use more water in your concrete or in your mortar work so that is it when you are using silt when you have too much silt or too much clay in your component you are going to get this problem you are going to get cracks in your building you get it you are going to get cracks in the building so i I, I now, after this, I'm going to give you a recommendation as to what to do because it's not easy to get a hundred percent sand and a hundred percent component of everything. So, with the silt, we will by all means get it. Now, how, how would you how can you check? Because when we have too much silt, which is more than eight percent in your component, it is not good. 
the only way is to wash the whole sand that you are coming to use so that you get the fine too much fine out of it or you sieve it yourself how can you see a cubic of sand very big amount of sand you sieve it to remove the fine sand from it before you can use it to build you can't do that you get it so now we come in i've worked with this company a long time it's a german company in ghana i've worked with them for a long time and this was the problems that we used to solve now i will leave my number on the screen on every almost all my videos i leave my number on the screen so that you can contact me if you need some of our chemicals for your building now this is it with our chemical this is the role it plays it plays a role of oiling every component oiling every component in the mortar work so when you have sand it will oil the whole sand so even if sand comes between sand and sand it is oiled and it it has a binding property so the sand will bind with the other sand well so it it will perform its role like a cement this is what i mean it's like dipping a small amount of metal in a bitumen you know bitumen the one they use it for coal tar or roots bitumen is a binding agent so if you put that metal a small metal inside it and you put another metal inside the bitumen and you attach them together with you combine them together you get to find out that they will bind unless it has a large surface area that's when you can easily break it into two different components but if they are small they will bind together as if they are together that's the same way our material or our substance play you get it so it will it will it will oil every component in the mortar work so even if there's an interstitial defect substitutional defect shosky or fenkel defect all these kind of defects if they are inside the sand they are still going to bond together and when you when there's a good bondage within within them the druk versus guide which in english we call it the compressive strength is high because it's very tough and it's combined together so when you compress it you're going to get a high strength and that is good for mortar works and also for concrete works too you get it and the workability is also good because it's like oiling a surface wherever you want to put it it will just pass through very easily you get it so the workability is very good in german we call it the verarbeitbarkeit verarbeitbarkeit when you get the workability to be good you don't need to use too much water in it you don't need to use too much water which will affect the strength the consistency and everything in the concrete you get it so normally now we in ghana when we are doing our mortar works we don't do the slam test we don't do any test we don't do any test we just mix it and pack we use it but when you have our chemical you add it to your water and you reduce the amount of cement or water and you use our chemical in the right ratio and you get the same results you are going to get a better result as compared to using the cement and water alone you get it that's why i'm always recommending people to buy at least something to add an additive or something to add to your mortar works or your concrete works because in its raw ratio you are not going to get that fine thing or the quality of it you are not going to get it so you can build a very nice building two years time you get to see that when it rains or water falls on the floor it splash on your building and all the down even after the uh, dampness problem solving everything you get to see that down there it is flowing like uh, you can see that the surface is very very rough just because the bondage was very very low so when water splash on it splash on it then the bondage gets low and you can't get a good surface appearance or you wouldn't get a good surface finish you get it so it's always good to add add additives to your substances to or to your mortar work so that you, the aesthetics can be maintained you can get a very good surface finish and it's easy for you to paint it too because the bondage is good and because of the oiling property that it has is not easy it, it because you use the fine sample uh, sand and you have this oily property in it 
the surface becomes very smooth so you wouldn't use too much paint at a small surface area immediately you apply it it works very good so please just when you are building a four bedroom apartment it's good but if you can make it three and you do it and do it well i will recommend that for you because sometimes it's not about how big the house is but about how nice it looks and how quality it is the quality is more important because you can build a four bedroom apartment a big ap apartment and you realize that cracks all over the place now at the end of the day if you want to sell it you are going to sell it at a very low price you are not going to get your price because anyone who come and see the building will complain that no this building can collapse anytime or it's not very nice you get it so please just try to get some additives or some chemicals that you add to your mortar works so that the beauty of it can also be maintained you get it so if you are interested i'll leave my number on the screen you contact me that you need this kind of chemical i'll talk to you personally feel free to talk to me ask me any question i'll answer you if i can help you i'll answer you and i recommend you to the right person to get to so that you can get your chemical okay so i'll end here uh, please kindly subscribe to my channel kindly subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed to my channel and leave a comment like my videos so that i can go on with more videos i'll get to know that you love my videos and see you in my next video bye